What we're going to do here is explore the quadratic relationship between flow rate through an orifice or a venturi tube and the differential pressure that that orifice or venturi tube creates. Here we have an illustration of a fluid moving through a venturi. It goes through a wide section, then through a narrow section, and widens back out again. This produces a difference of pressure between the wide and narrow sections, which we refer to as differential pressure, or delta P. The equation relating volumetric flow rate and delta P takes this general form. There are more variables in here dealing with the uh, geometry of the tube. I'm not showing you all this detail. I'm simply showing you a proportionality. We have a flow rate here, differential pressure, and a constant of proportionality that we can calculate given any concrete measurements on any given orifice plate or venturi tube. What we're going to do here is actually start up airflow through a homemade venturi tube made out of a piece of PVC pipe in a vertical orientation. We're going to measure the pressure drop created by that tube, look at the readout on that differential pressure meter, and then we're going to vary the airflow through the tube by varying the speed of a variable speed drive that's driving the fan motor pushing air through the tube. As we see from the equation here, Q is equal to K times the square root of delta P. Airflow, Q, is proportional to the fan speed, which is proportional to motor frequency. We see here airflow uh, is equal to K times the square root of differential pressure, and the airflow is typically measured in cubic feet per minute or some other volumetric unit. In this case, we know the air is being driven by a variable speed fan, and the nature of the fan's operation is that that airflow rate will be por proportional to the speed the fan turns, which in this case is proportional to the frequency that we're driving the motor at. So we can rewrite our proportionality as this. The frequency we're driving the motor is equal to some constant proportionality times the square root of differential pressure. In this particular case, I've done a test run, and we found that at a motor speed of 60 hertz, a frequency of 60 hertz, we get about 19.3 inches of water column differential pressure. I'll demonstrate that here. Then what we'll do is we will change the frequency of the motor, and we'll take a look at how the differential pressure changes. You'll see right away it's not a linear relationship. So we'll start this up over here, start up our fan. waiting for the oil system pressure to build. We're actually using the airflow to spin up a turbocharger, so the oil pressure has to build to save the turbo bearings. The motor will start here very soon. There we go, spinning up to speed. The speed is 60 hertz, and the differential pressure we measure right here is 19.12, close to the 19.3 inches of water column measured earlier. Now taking these figures, I calculated a value for K, a constant proportionality, given the frequency and the differential pressure measured earlier. This constant we can now plug into the equation and solve for the amount of differential pressure given any number of different frequencies. So here I've calculated what the differential pressure ought to be at a frequency of 40 hertz instead of 60 hertz. We expect the pressure to go from previous value of 19.3 inches of water down to about 8.578 inches of water. So we'll come over here and we'll decrease the motor frequency from 60 hertz down to 40 hertz. You can hear the motor slowing down. There's 40 hertz. Coming over here, we read a differential pressure of 8.605 inches of water column. Notice that we calculated 8.578, so we're awfully close to our predicted measurement. Uh, 8.578 inches of water calculated, and about 8.6, a little over 8.6 inches of water here. Moving down to our next test point, we're going to lower the motor frequency to 30 hertz Using the k-factor we calculated previously, we calculate a differential pressure of 4.825 inches of water. So we're going to decrease the motor speed to 30 hertz and see how close to that value we get. So here we go once again. You 
hear the motor slowing down. Thirty hertz. We come over here and it reads four point eight eight two, four point eight nine inches of water. We have calculated four point eight two five inches of water. That's our calculated value, four point eight two five predicted. And over here, four point eight eight. We're not too far off. Our next test is going to be a decrease the motor frequency down to twenty hertz. We predict a value of 2.144 inches of water given that new motor speed. We'll come over here and decrease this to 20 hertz. There's 20 hertz. Coming over here, we read a differential pressure of 2.199 inches of water column. We predicted 2.144. So once again, close agreement to theory, close agreement to prediction, what we see when we change the motor speed down to 20 hertz. And you notice, looking at these figures, uh, if we take a simple doubling of motor frequency or doubling of airflow from 20 hertz up to 40 hertz, our prediction was from 2.144 inches of water up to 8.578 inches of water. You will notice that that is not a doubling of pressure, even though we're merely talking about a doubling of motor speed or a doubling of volumetric airflow. A doubling of airflow actually results in a quadrupling of pressure. 8.578 inches of water is four times the amount of pressure at 2.144. Likewise, if we triple the motor speed, let's say we go from 20 hertz back to our original figure of 60 hertz. Well, 20 hertz gave us 2.144 inches of water column pressure. 60 hertz gave us 19.3 inches of water column pressure. The ratio between 19.3 and 2.144 is certainly not three to one ratio. We are dealing with nine times the amount of pressure. 2.144 times nine is what will give you 19.3 inches of water column. So we're dealing with what we call a quadratic function. We're dealing with a function that increases with the square of the airflow rate instead of linearly. That is the nature of any of these uh, differential pressure type flow meter technologies based on the acceleration of a fluid. The pressure developed is proportional to the square of the flow rate. And that is precisely why we have to take the square root of that pressure signal in order to determine flow rate through an orifice or venturi tube or any similar element.